Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, and thank you for joining us once again for the Trinity College Football Coaches Show. I'm Mary Hawkins for TSN, joined once again by head football coach Jeff Devaney. Coach, first two games, you told us you struggled a little bit on offense, but this past game you guys were able to put a lot of bantams up on that checklist. 48 points against Hamilton. What did you like out of your team? Well, I thought uh, our big focus the week before was just uh, trying to get a little bit more of a sense of urgency with our offense. Fewer mental mistakes uh, that, that had really killed us the first couple weeks. And so the, the thing I was most uh, uh, proud of with the guys is on special teams and our offense, we really clicked. We did some things better. Still have a long way to go to, to get to where we can be. Um, but big, big improvement from weeks one and two. You talk about earlier this year, you mentioned that w with the loss of so many impact players on offense and defense, you were going to need to see some freshmen sort of step up this year. Sonny Puzo, in particular, the quarterback, threw two, two touchdown passes, the first two of his career. What would you like out of Sonny's game this weekend? And, and in addition to the other freshmen on the field? Yeah, Sonny, actually, we, we uh, voted him our offensive player of the week. Uh, he was very efficient. He was six for seven in the passing game. And, and a couple of the, the, the nice throws he had down the field, uh, maybe the fans didn't notice because they're watching the ball, but he was getting hit while he was throwing it. And uh, I'll actually get the chance to show you some of those clips. But, you know, Nick Gaynor, a freshman receiver, stepped up at a big touchdown catch at the end of the half. Angel Tejada, one of our freshman offensive linemen, played a lot for us at offensive guard. Uh, Nate Hitchcock, a freshman defensive end, played very well. So we did have some young players step in and uh, – we were able to get a lot of guys in the field on Saturday, and that's going to help us as we get, get on down the road here. So for those of you who weren't there, uh, I've got some clips to show you, and I'm going to start out with some special teams. Uh, as This past week, one of our main focuses was to get better in all three phases of our special teams. We just feel like we have too much talent and too much depth on the team to not win the special teams battle each week, and we were inconsistent the first two weeks. So. One of the things our, we want to try to do is get a better job with our return team setting up field position. Uh, we do feel like we have a great weapon in Ben Crick back here. So we are spent a lot of time working on our blocking and getting some, uh, some personnel in the field, some guys that were going to give some great effort. And you can see here, uh, if I take this back to the beginning, real good job here by junior Jake Rivers, senior Eddie Franca, uh, junior Will Herbert, all taking care of their assignments up front and holding some guys up. And then we allowed Ben Crick to get the ball and we protected him back here with Ian Duggar. And, you know, if you can do that and you can make a few blocks and get a guy like Ben Crick the ball in the open field, good things will happen, as you can see here. And those are the types of plays we weren't making in the first couple weeks, which makes it hard when you're constantly fighting the uphill battle against field position. And we did a better job of that in this game. Kyle Pulick, our sophomore punter, was our special teams player of the week. He averaged 45 yards a punt. And this is just another example of winning the field position battle here. Kyle does a great job of angling this kick. It comes down around here, uh, about a 45 yard kick here, and, and just gives Hamilton a long field. It's a lot easier to go out and play defense when the uh, opponent's starting inside their own 15. So those are things that were really important to us, and I was glad to see the guys execute that. Our kickoff team was outstanding this game too. Uh, we made a couple changes with personnel. Uh, we worked very hard on our technique. And the thing I liked about our guys, we gave great effort, but the guys kept their shoulders square. And we, you could see this picture every time we kicked off. There weren't a lot of gaps to run the ball in because we got guys down the field. The guys, when they got down there, broke down, kept their shoulders square. Uh, Tom Haverty does a good job here of forcing this kick, making the ball go even more east-west backwards to Brett Sickles, who is our contain player, makes a big tackle. Uh, and, you know, special teams, just like the rest of the game, it's all about everybody taking care of their assignment. You don't necessarily need nine guys to make the tackle, but here we've got everybody taking care of their assignment. And Brett makes a good play as the contain player. And again, you're starting the team inside their 25. Makes it easier to play defense. Now, offensively, we ended up playing in the first half both our quarterbacks, Henry Foy and Sonny Puzo. They were both very efficient. Uh, this is our first touchdown pass uh, off the screen here. We're in a trip set to our right uh, with three wide receivers. A.J. Jones is lined up as our number three in the seam. And uh, I thought I'd show you this from the end zone view because you see we get good protection here uh, coming off the play action pass. And they're in a one safety look. And A.J. Jones is climbing. The guys you can't see here, we've got Nick Ragone in the seam basically putting this safety in a position where he has to cover two verticals. 
and Henry throws a really good ball to AJ in stride for our first touchdown. Nicely done by those two guys there. Well designed. Uh, here's a big play, you know, going back, you know, we've got the two running backs here, and we're backed up. It's third and nine inside our own five early in the game here, and Evan Bunker, who really caught fire in the first half of this game, is going to take an inside zone play up the gut here. Very good kick out block by Ben Crick. The offensive line does a great job of uh, zone blocking, and Evan really hits the crease downhill. Right there, he picks up a first down, gets us out of that, that bad field position that we were in. It's a big play for us there. Here's Sonny Puzo, the freshman quarterback, is in. And we've got a, a four-receiver set, basically, with Mike Budness as the fourth receiver, lined up as a tight end. And we're going to run verticals against them off the of play action. Uh, Budness is going to come down the seam here. Uh, we have a, a receiver also coming down the sideline. And you can see we're putting that safety in a bind. We're playing on, coming off the play action fake again. And that safety's got two guys running at him. We've got A.J. Jones coming down the sideline here and Mike Budness down the middle. And Sonny makes a good throw leading Michael. And that's our second touchdown of the day. Here's a big run by Evan Bunker. We've, we're lined up in that trip set again. We showed before, here's A.J. Jones. We've got three receivers to the left. And, uh, you know, Hamilton's, they, they, they zone pressure a lot. Our guys did a great job of picking up the zone pressure. They're going to bring their linebackers in here. The offensive line does a great job of picking up the blitz. And uh, I think I could have scored on this play. Uh, but Evan took it to the house, which was, was nice to see him get going. He had 120 yards rushing in the first half. Right, another offensive play here again coming off of the play action. Very similar to the one we saw before uh, where we're going to play action here and send M Mike Budness down the seam. The safety is going to cheat off the hash to the receiver. And this is just an excellent throw by Sonny because we actually don't protect him very well. We lose the nose guard in the protection. And I don't know how he got this ball down the field getting hit like that, but he put it right on the money in between a couple of defenders. And Mike Budden has had a great game for us, had five catches in the first half, was a big part of the offense. And then this is right at the end of the half here. There's only, uh, I think, 12 seconds left or so, and we've got freshman Nick Gaynor is split out wide. He's going to double move this corner. Real good move by Nick. Very good throw by Sonny. Sonny throws a line drive over here, and Nick, who's got great, great strong hands, goes up and makes the play. This is how we ended the half here. This is the beginning of the third quarter. Uh, Henry Foy is back on the field. Very similar type of play that we were running before here. You can see the play action. Now Brendan Oliver, our junior, is in at the H-back position. He's going to run down the seam. This time the safety kind of hugs the inside seam and leaves the outside receiver open. And Henry makes a good decision right here. Puts the ball right on target to Adrian Johnson. And uh, I think we really heard him. They tried to stack the box a little bit. And we put their safeties in some bad situations with some vertical routes. And the quarterbacks did a great job executing. Both of them were very efficient. We were, it was really nice to be able to get some of our, our uh, guys who don't always get to get the play on the field. And this is uh, junior running back Jacob Rivers, who, uh, you know, when you have Bunker and Crick on the team, the third and fourth tailbacks don't get a lot of carries. But Jacob took advantage here. Great block by tight end Brendan Dowling. And Jacob went the distance. It's nice to see that. He's a talented young man. Getting up, got an opportunity there. Same thing with Chudy Regbulum, our other junior tailback. Here he is, number 23. Uh, getting an inside zone. Excellent cut by Chudy. You can see the O-line really. This is our second O-line in the game now, and they really picked up their assignments well. Chudy makes a nice jump cut and then makes a couple people miss. Turns it into a big play. It's nice to see those guys get on the field and execute. Defensively, we have uh, Tom Samansky here, our, our junior outside linebacker, had his best game of the year, was our defensive player of the week. Uh, this time we're going to bring him on a blitz, 
And it, what I liked about this is Tom is just reckless here. They're pulling their guard on their play action, and Tom actually tries to jump over the guard, gets his hands on the ball, and creates a uh, an interception for Casey Tanner. You can see Tom flying in the air there, getting the ball tipped. Casey picks it off. Excellent job here by Brian Doan as we work on this drill a lot. When you intercept the ball, the nearest man blocks the intended receiver, and you can see that when Casey catches the ball, Brian gets in front of him, blocks the intended receiver, and Casey takes it in for a touchdown. That was a big play for us defensively early in the game. Here's Brian. We, we mentioned Brian the first two weeks. He's played, played extremely well, and he continued that again here, number 27, our field corner. You know, tough when you're playing quarter coverage to ask him to compete on five-yard hitches and also not get beat over the top. But Brian does a great job studying film, competes real well, does a nice job breaking up that short throw. This is uh, just a, a, you know, a good, we talked about this before, how well our defense is fitting and playing their responsibilities. This is a zone pressure we had in against their run plays. We were trying to zone pressure the, uh, the zone play that they run. And we've got our linebacker walked up in the gap and he's gonna, what we call boom blitz. He's gonna boom blitz here and bring the defensive end behind him, Nate Sear, with the outside linebacker off the edge as a contain player. And all three players execute their responsibility very well and Nate ends up coming free for a tackle. Really good open field tackle here by Casey Tanner. You know, Hamilton, very similar to Bates, although in a different way. They run a lot of triple option, uh, whereas Bates does it kind of old school. Hamilton does it more out of the spread. And we get real good assignment football here. Our DNs crashing, playing the dive. Our uh, outside linebacker and inside linebacker are on the quarterback. And then Casey Tanner, when you do things like that, you're asking your safeties to make good open field tackles. And Casey makes an excellent play right there. We're really improving our open field tackling in that last couple in the last couple games as well. Okay, we talked about junior Tom Szymanski before. Uh, again, another excellent play by him. They're running this. This is one of the most difficult plays I think they run. Their toss play on the perimeter because they cut block people inside here. It's tough to get off that block. And Tom Szymanski does an excellent job playing off of the receiver here and creating a play for a loss. Great effort by our guys getting to the ball there. Another big play by Tom. This is the same blitz we saw before where we're bringing the linebacker inside in the end around. Uh, and this time it happens to be against the pass play. And Tom comes free. Excellent timing by him on the blitz. Great aiming point for the quarterback and a nice sack for him. Okay, just like we talked about with the offense getting some young guys in the field, uh, we've got a bunch of young guys in the field here. We've got all of our uh, young D linemen on the field, a couple young linebackers. This is a freshman, Moise Francelon, uh, who does a great job right here executing this, this play. In this call, we are asking that DN to climb high up the field to get rid of the outside zone, and he does that. It's great when you get your young guys on the field and they execute the game plan. It shows they were paying attention at practice and in meetings. Here's that same play from the end zone view. So hopefully that uh, gives you an idea of what the hell, how the game went this past weekend. And for those of you in the Boston area, I look forward to seeing you up at Tufts. Coach, we're sort of starting to see the league take shape now. You, Wesley, and Amherst are 3-0. Middlebury's 2-1. How do you keep your guys focused for these two games against Tufts and Bowdoin before you take on Wesleyan, uh, Middlebury, and Amherst in those final three weeks? Well, it's you know that's it's part of our job to keep them focused. Number one, and the thing is, you, every week in this league, anybody can beat anybody. As as you can see, last week there were some upsets, and. Uh, our guys, I think they understand. We're still very young in a lot of positions. We're still not where we need to be as a team if we want to be a championship team. And that's basically what we're telling our guys is, you know, I said the same thing I said to them last week. I don't really care who we're playing right now. If they want to be a championship team, we have to win every game we play. And if we're going to do that, then we have to be a lot better 
two, three, four weeks from now than we are right now. And the only way to do that is to show up every day and, and, and improve. So that's really our focus. You guys were able to seemingly able to get a lot more pressure on the quarterback in this past week's game against Hamilton. Was that sort of a personnel switch that you guys made, or was that just sort of you guys really playing up to your potential, you think? Well, I think it's a combination of things. I mean, they have a different style of offense, too, uh, where their protections, you know, they're not doing it. In the Williams game, Williams did a lot of max protection. Bates clearly, you know, didn't throw the ball. I think they threw it five times. So, you know, Hamilton's a little bit more spread. They give you a little bit more opportunity to get after the quarterback, and, uh, and our guys did do that. Thank you for joining us this week. We appreciate your time. Make sure to check out the Bantams as they take on the Tufts Jumbos this weekend in Medford, and then check back with us next Tuesday when we take a look at the Bowdoin game, which will be back at Jesse Miller Field as the Bantams go for 50 consecutive wins in the Coop.